we started last week talking about Ken Mabuni. Does anybody remember uh, uh, who Ken Mabuni is? Does anybody know? Ken Mabuni is the founder of Shitaru, which is the style of karate that we take. Okay, so um, this the kind of what we're reading about is is him and his development of Shitaru and his help in actually spreading karate as a whole and even influencing other styles of karate. So um, this is part two of part four, and um, it's a little long, and it's got some, some words in it, some names in it I can't even pronounce too well, so y'all have to bear with me on that. But it's, it's good to hear a little bit of history of uh, as we continue to narrow things down to our specific style of karate here in a few weeks, okay? So this is about Mabuni and Kobudo. And Kobudo, does anybody know what Kobudo is? Kobudo is weapons. And um, Kobudo actually means, translates into ancient art, is what it talks about, okay? So here's what it says about Mabuni. One aspect rather rarely reported about Kinwama Mabuni is the fact that he was also a profound expert in traditional Okinawan weapon art of Kobudo. Mabuni had already learned the use of the bow, or the, the six-foot staff, and the sai, or the iron fork, from his teacher, Aragaki. Later on, Mabuni perfected his abilities with Chinen Sanda and his especially gifted most famous student, Moden Yabiku, who was also the primary teacher of Shinken Taira, uh, other important sources of influence were Shimbuku Tawada and Jino Suyoshi. Mabuni was always regarded karate and kabuto as a single entity and thus constantly taught weapon forms during his time in Japan. Um, he thought it was really important that in addition to learning empty hand karate, it's important to learn weapons as well. In doing this, Mabuni has been to has been the first to effectively introduce Kobudo to the Japanese mainland. So Mabuni was the one that was really um, the main person that started teaching this style of weapons to Japan. Okay, because Japan had some some weapons. They had the samurai, right? What did the samurai use? They used the sword. They used the katana, and uh, they actually had different types of swords. Uh, they had the Daito, which was a super long sword. They had the Katana, which was their main one. They had the Wagazashi that they carried, which was a shorter sword, and usually a Tanto or a knife, which looked like the other sword. Um, Mabuni's most famous Kobudo student was probably Shinkin Taira. Taira's first trained in karate with Funakoshi, and Funakoshi, as we learned last week, was the one who started Shotokan karate in Japan and Kabuto with Moden Yabiku. After Yabiku awarded Taira with the Shihan Menjo, which means Grand Master, in 1933, he told him to continue his studies under the tutelage of Mabuni. In the six years following 1934, Mabuni bought Taira, he taught Taira and introduced him to the stick fighting techniques of Bojutsu and Seisoku, uh, of Seisoku Soyoshi in Uraso, as the side jutsu of Hantagua and Hamahiga. And I'm wondering, and I'd have to check with Hanshan uh, with this, one of our Tonfa Kata is actually called Hamahiga no Tonfa. So it might be related uh, to him. So I don't know. During the following years, uh, Shinkin Taira standardized the curriculum in Kobudo's Kata, and even famous students of Mabuni like Ryusho Sakagami became students of Taira later on. Today, Shinkin Taira is regarded as the most, by most historians, as the most important Kobudo master of the pre-war era, which means before uh, World War II. Fighting styles and especially techniques of weaponless close combat have a long tradition in Japan. According to the Nihon Shoki already in uh, 20 th 23 BC, Nomino Suzuki should have killed his much stronger opponent, uh, Kuihaya of Tema, with the use of vital point techniques or a Temiwasan. 
When karate was publicly demonstrated for the first time in the Japanese mainland in Kyoto on the 5th of May, 1917, Japan had already had a distinctive martial arts scene with a complex system of classical fighting styles, which was Dai Nihon Bugai or Koryu Bujutsu. These systems usually hark back to ancient Japanese noble families and encompass training in various weapons and weaponless fighting techniques. And these have been handed on within the families for centuries. After Mabuni's relocation to mainland, ja uh, mainland Japan, you see the influence of his training in several, or several classic Japanese weaponless fighting systems of jiu-jitsu, uh, whether it be yawara or taijutsu. We know that Mabuni trained ex intensively and exchanged techniques with Otsuka, Yuishiba, Konishi, and Fujita Seiko, the 14th Grandmaster of Kogaru Wadaha Ninjutsu. So he studied with ninja guys too, which is kind of cool. All right. Um, his son, Mabuni's son, Kanai, reports that they gave each other many suggestions concerning the development of their styles. It is evident that these masters introduced Mabuni at least to some of the techniques and concepts of, the, of their practice styles, like Musoru, Takenuchi-ru, Shindo Yoshinuru, Tenshin Shinyoru, um, Shinkage-ru Jiu-Jitsu, Daito-ru Aiki-Jitsu, and Nanban Satoru. It's a lot of style names, okay? In 1941, Mabuni introduced his student Manzo Iwata to Fujita Seiko in order to have him taught in Fujita's Dainru Jiu-Jitsu. Mabuni had taught Bojutsu to Iwata, but thought that the Joe with a four-foot stick would suit him better. Although Mabuni does in this case just follow the traditional karate mindset, which always puts the knowledge above the teacher of the style, this incident does also indicate Mabuni's open standpoint concerning the Japanese martial arts. It appears like that he had quite a mature attitude about it, seeing the huge advantages of open dialogue instead of admitting in rivalry or rat races. So he was big on learning other styles. It wasn't my style is the best and that's all I'm going to learn. He was open to learning and teaching uh, and learning from other styles, which is always really important. It's important to have your main style, like our main style is she threw, but it's always good to learn from other people, okay? Master Mabuni made relations with all persons and styles with open mind and positiveness. This is how Manzo Iwata and Fujita engaged with uh, Master Kinwa Mabuni, Iwata's son, Genzo remembers. In fact, Iwata did not only train Dainru Jojutsu with Fujita, he furthermore became his uchideshi, or in-house student, an inheritor of Nanban Satoru and Shigetsuru Shuriken Jutsu. So he became the, uh, almost, it sounds like almost like the Soki of those two styles. Fujita's Nanban Satoru Kempo is of special interest in this case, as this style, which is similar to karate, highly relies on strikes and kicks, which combines with throws, or nage waza, okay, and joint manipulation techniques, kensetsu waza. Originally taught by the Satsuma clan, it does emphasize the use of atemi waza or the pressure points, but it does not contain any kata. Mabuni studied any martial art that surged at the time, always looking for the positive. So he if, if there was something that was out there for him to learn, he tried to learn it and always looked for the best parts of that style, okay? As pointed out before, we know that not only Mabuni's student Iwata, but also Mabuni himself enjoyed teaching uh, some teaching by Fujita. The influence the renowned Fujita had on Mabuni becomes quite clear when you consider another quote of Iwata San Gensa where he states, Bunkai Kumite was taught by Mabuni Kinwa, but some parts would change for Satoru style. Master Mabuni then took his style in some parts that fitted with reason, especially uh, Yakiwaza or counter techniques and Nagewaza. So he was um, teaching Bunkai, and we know what Bunkai is the application of the kata. Okay? 
how the kata works, how the techniques work uh, in self-defense. Especially because of people like Konishi and Fujita, Mabuni also came into contact with other leading exponents of the contemporary Japanese martial arts scene, like uh, Ueno Takashi Tenshin. Ueno was an expert of a multitude of Japanese styles and had reportedly both a strong ki or energy, a hot temper, and close connections with the Japanese mafia, the Yakuza. That's probably not a good thing, okay? Um, well, it's definitely not a good thing. I'm not going to say probably. It is definitely not a good thing to have connections with the Japanese mafia, okay? Um, both Kunishi and Fujita taught regularly at Renato Ueno's uh, Rensei Kan Dojo in Shinakawa, Tokyo. Right in this dojo, Ueno also taught Mabuni, Fujita, and Sakagami Ryushu in Shindo Tenshinaru Kempo. On the other hand, um, Fujita Seiko taught uh, Nanban Satoru Kempo to Ueno uh, in exchange to be taught this other style, Kunishi, and as stated before, Mabuni and Kenwa. Possibly the most important evidence about Mabuni's extensive work in classical Japanese martial arts is the Bugai Ruha Daijiten, or the Great Encyclopedia of Martial Arts. This standard work of the Japanese style names Mabuni Kenwa as the inheritor of the fighting tradition of Shinden Fudoru Kenpo. This school was originally founded as the Shinden Jiganru by Yat. Yata Onasai Noyaki, and then later renamed by Yata Noriyuki um, in 1822, uh, or a little bit later after that. Mabuni was the 17th generation Soki of the school, and it passed on to his son Kanai, who then taught uh, Takashi. So basically, a lot of what this is saying is um, Mabuni was learning from other styles and taking other styles in, and that's how his style of Shiduru continued to develop by everything that he was learning from other styles and taking the best parts of different styles and the fighting and the kata and different things that he learned from different teachers to help create his style, okay? But from whom Mabuni Kenwa originally learned the style is unsolved. As Yata Noriyuki was sentenced to life imprisonment in 1872, it is very unlikely that Mabuni ever received any direct teachings from him. All we can say for certain so far is that Mabuni studied the style intensively and is actively taught to it and actively taught it to his students. In view of Mabuni's connection to the Japanese Koryu Jujitsu, these remarks could just count as a first step. But based on this information, we can already state that Mabuni, besides his karate and kobudo, also had considerable knowledge of Koryu Jiu-Jitsu. So um, Mabuni was uh, very strong in karate, he was very strong in weapons, and he was very strong in Jiu-Jitsu, learning you know, throws and joint locks and stuff like that uh, to work in addition to his karate, okay? And with concern to this interesting aspect, there is without doubt need for further research. So stay tuned. For part three next week, uh, talking about Mumbuni's connections to the Japan Karate Association and to Shotokan, so that we can we start to see more of the evolutionary evolution of karate as a whole in Japan. So it's really starting to get into um, how he influenced and how he helped karate grow through Japan. He was one of the main people uh, that started that started that. Okay. Thank you.